want to tell you a woman's story. An economic crisis forces a woman and her husband to flee to a near but dangerous country. The husband recognizes that his wife's beauty could entice foreign men to take her for themselves and kill him, so he tells his wife they will claim to be brother and sister. The woman recognizes the vulnerability this will place her in and begs and reasons with her husband against this plan, but he does not listen. After their immigration, the woman hides herself for five years in order to avoid being seen and taken by another man. But word of her beauty still spreads until it reaches the country's ruler, who takes her away by force, but offers the brother financial compensation, which he accepts. Eventually, the truth of their relationship comes to light, and the ruler returns the woman to her husband, giving him even more money to make amends. They leave the country, the woman used and abused, the man unharmed and prosperous on her account. This may have sounded like a modern story, but it's actually 2,000 years old. It was found among the Dead Sea Scrolls in a scroll we now call the Genesis Apocryphon, a text from the 2nd century BC that was unknown to us until its discovery in 1946. However, the story may have felt familiar to those with a religious background, because the couple is Abraham and Sarah, ancestors of the modern Jewish and Muslim people, and another version of this same story can be found in Genesis 12 of the Jewish and Christian Bibles. But there's a striking difference between the two versions of the story. In the Apocryphon version that I just told you, Sarah is distraught and resists her impending exploitation, while in the biblical account, she is completely silent, an expressionless object passed between two men. My thesis employs the lenses of both biblical and gender studies to compare the Genesis Apocryphon scroll with the biblical book of Genesis and ask questions that have never been asked in Dead Sea Scrolls research. Why did the ancient authors choose to either represent or silence the voices of women in these texts? Why did the silenced version of the story eventually become scripture? And perhaps most importantly, how might the silencing of exploited women in the Bible have laid a foundation for our own cultural moment? The Bible was the foundation of Western culture, and the Genesis Apocryphon is an ancient Me Too story, one that was lost for two millennia until its discovery in the last century. It not only gives Sarah a voice, but it calls to account the way the Bible has been misused to historically justify silencing women. The goal of my research is to expand the conversation around the Bible and give voices to those who have long been unheard. With the Dead Sea Scrolls, we have the chance to retell foundational stories so that the girls of the future will know that Sarah had a voice, and so do they. Thank you.